Hi, Robert here. This week I'm doing a step-by-step -step guide on how to install PFSense on dedicated hardware. PFSense is a very powerful firewall router from NetGate. The software comes in both a community version and a paid support version. There are currently no differences in the capabilities of each version other than support directly from NetGate in the paid version. Today I'll be showing you the hardware I use for my installation of PFSense and the process for installing the software. The steps that I'll be covering are what hardware I use and where I got it from, downloading the PFSense software, writing the PFSense image to a USB drive, installing the software and setting up the interfaces for the first time, and finally logging into the web interface and configuring for first use. This guide is for people who have no experience of PFSense but want to set it up for the first time. So, let's get started. The hardware that I'll be installing PFSense on today was purchased from AliExpress. It has 8GB of RAM and 64GB of SSD storage and a Celeron N3150 processor. On the back of the unit it has two ports for Wi-Fi antennas, a microphone input, a speaker output, two Ethernet ports, two HDMI ports, a DC input and on the front of the device it has six USB ports and a power button. Although I purchased this item from AliExpress, it can also be purchased from Amazon and eBay. OK, let's download PFSense. Go to pfsense.org and then click on download. See the version number 2.5.1, which is the most current version as of the 7th of May 2021. Select architecture as AMD64 and the installer select USB Memstick installer. For the console, select VGA and for the mirror select the location closest to you and then click download. Next we need some software to write the PFSense image to a flash drive. But first, plug a USB flash drive into your computer. A 4 to 8 gigabyte drive has the best compatibility, although I have used 32 and 64 gigabyte drives in the past without issue. Now go to www.rufus.ie, once on the Rufus site scroll down to where it says download and then click on the link that says Rufus 3.1.4. Once Rufus is downloaded, click to open where it says do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device say yes next you'll be presented with the Rufus dialog box at the top select your USB flash drive and then click on the select image and select the PFSense image click open and click start You'll get a message come up that says warning, all data on this device and then the name of your USB flash drive will be destroyed. To continue with this operation, click OK. To quit, click cancel. So we click OK. We now let the image write to the USB flash drive.
Once the image is finished writing to the USB flash drive, click close and then remove the USB flash drive from your computer. Now we need to install the PFSense software that we have just written to a USB flash drive. But first, let's make sure the following cables are connected on the back. You have the DC power input, and next to that we have the HDMI output, which should connect to a suitable monitor. Then we have two Ethernet connections, one for the LAN and the other for the WAN. You'll need a keyboard for the installation, so either plug in a keyboard or a wireless keyboard dongle, as I'm doing. Next we need to plug in the PFSense USB drive and then press the power button. Next, dependent on the hardware you're using, you'll need to access the boot menu. In my case it's F11. Once in the boot menu, you then need to select the USB drive to boot from. This will now start the initial installation of PFSense on the hardware. On all the following screens, the default option is highlighted, and for this installation, the default values are all fine, so just press enter each time. At the end of the installation you'll get a message that says the installation is now finished. Before exiting the installer would you like to open a shell in the new system to make any final manual modifications? Say no. It then says the installation of PFSense is complete. Would you like to reboot into the installed system now? So remove the USB drive and then click reboot. Now that the system has booted up for the first time, we need to give PFSense some basic information to configure its interfaces. First you'll be asked, should VLANs be set up now, yes or no? Type N and press enter. Next you'll be asked to enter the name of the WAN interface. In my case it's RE0, but can differ on different equipment based on the network cards being used. So type RE0 and press enter. Next you'll be asked to enter the LAN address. In my case it's RE1. So type RE1 and press enter. Next you'll be asked, do you want to proceed, yes or no? Type Y and press enter. 
PFSense will now configure the interfaces based on the information you have just given. Please note that in my test network the one IP address is a private class C address but when connected to a cable DSL router in modem mode you'll have a proper internet facing IP address. With your PC connected to the LAN port go to 192.168.1.1 in your internet browser. You will get a message telling you that the connection isn't private. This is because it's connecting to PFSense using a self-signed SSL certificate, which is perfectly okay for now. Click on the Advanced tab, and then click on Proceed. You are now in the PFSense login page. Enter the default username of Admin, and the default password of PFSense, and then click Sign In. You will now see the PFSense Setup Wizard, which will be displayed for the first time that you log in. The wizard will provide guidance through the initial configuration of PFSense. Click Next. The first page that you will come to is telling you about NetGate's paid support. We don't need this, so click Next. Next you can enter a host name and domain, or you can just leave the defaults. For the primary DNS server use Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 and the secondary DNS servers as Google's 8.8.8.8. .8 you can also leave the checkbox checked for Allow DNS servers to be overwritten by DHCP slash PPP on 1. Click Next. Leave the time server hostname as it is and for the time zone choose your location. In my case, it's Europe, London. Then click Next. On the next page, 4 of 9, scroll to the bottom of the page and click Next. Next, choose your LAN IP address. The default is normally fine unless your one port connects to an existing router that is already in that range. If it does, you will need to change this IP address as no routing can take place within the same subnet. Click Next. Next we need to choose a new admin password. So choose a password that you're going to remember that is suitably strong and then repeat it. Once you've done that, click Next. Now click Reload. The web interface will refresh. Once this is done, click Finish. You will now see a blue dialog box with copyright and trademark notices. Click Accept. Another blue box appears with a thank you message. Click close. Click on the X for NetGate services and support as we will not be using NetGate support services. That's it. PFSense is now installed. You can see we are on the latest version and under the DNS servers you can see the 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8 .8 that we added earlier plus other DNS servers supplied via DHCP slash PPP. Next, to confirm the internet connection is working, I'll do a trace cert to Google so that you can see what hops are made to get to the destination. To run a trace cert, click on the search icon on your taskbar. Type CMD and select command at the top of the list. In the command prompt window, enter tracert space google.com 
and press enter. The first hop is the router that we've just configured. The second hop is my home router, which is running PFSense. The third hop is my WAN IP address. In a normal setup, you wouldn't normally have step two. The remaining hops are the route taken to reach google.com. Okay, that concludes the installation of PFSense on dedicated hardware. You don't have to buy specific equipment to install PFSense on. You can use an old PC. You just need to make sure that you have two network ports, as you'll need one for the LAN and one for the WAN. Other than that, the installation of PFSense on the PC is exactly the same. I hope you found this video interesting. Until next time, thanks for watching.